Good morning everybody. Today we are discussing about the surgical management of cysts in the maxillofacial region. In this topic, we are concentrating about the management of cysts by two treatment options like enucleation or musculation and uh, how will you treat, what are the other treatment options we can use for the cyst and different types of cysts in different manner. So what do you mean by cyst? This is a pathological cavity having fluid, fluid or gaseous materials and which is not created by the accumulation of pus and the length. Where this is can occur? This can occur in the soft tissue or the bone and usually by lined by the epithelium and the maxillofacial region and not always by lined by the epithelium. Where the source of epithelium is the juice made by the enamel organ, reduce the enamel epithelium, epithelial epithel cells of malice. What are the pathologies? Pathologies mostly periodal or periapical cyst is from the cell dress of the malice. Polycara, the reduced enamel epithelium, characterized by cell dress of dental lamina. So, how will you classify the cyst? The like interosseous and soft tissue. Interosseous by epithelium, non epithelium, and system in the maxillary area. Odontogenic, anti nonologic, odontogenic divided into developmental and permanent. The odontogenic is mainly by the cells, cells of the basal layer of the oral epithelium, then the lamina, epithelial uh, ruts of cells. Enamel organ, reduced enamel epithelium, epithelial ruts of malice. Non odontogenic by entrapment of epithelium between the embryonic process, permanence of the cellular sinus, secretory glandular epithelium, and also remains of the epithelium on the nasopalatine duct. How the cyst is formed? Formation by the proliferation of the epithelium, central degeneration, and accumulation of the fluid, and that leads to the bone resorption. So, the enlargement also the mural growth and the accumulation of the contents. So, that will restrict the body area. So, according to the frequency of the cyst in the maxillofacial region, most of the common is seen the cyst is radical cyst, and after that, a dental cyst and OKC will come. And also, we can see the nasopalatine cyst. Most commonly seen is radical cyst. After that, only the dental cyst and OKC comes. Then, why we treat a cyst? What's the reason for the treatment of a cyst? It's caused a continuous expansion that will lead to the loss of vitality of the tooth. The tooth become mobile because bony expansion will be there, and also that will lead to facial deformation. Facial deformity is there, and if the cyst will enlarge and it goes to pathological fracture, and some of the cysts that will end up the nerve that will lead to neurofraxia, nerve damage, and that sometimes that leads to uh, neoplastic changes and also infection of the cyst. The tooth vitality, facial deformity, pathological fracture, narrow injury, and uh, other cases that leads to the neoplastic changes and the infection of the cyst. Then, the features that leads to the associated with the radicals are generally non vitality will be there. And teeth are joining the OKC, lateral paralysis, salt bones are vital. It produces a action crackling on palpation. If you had a 
percussion on the teeth or laying of this is produce a dull hollow sound which leads to loosening of the teeth if the patient is using danger ill fitting danger we can see neuroplasia because there will be pressure applied on that nerve and also its science it is information science so what are the radiographic examination we are used for the cyst mainly we are using iop the first one we are using is iop for a small cyst like a radicular or periphery cyst if the cyst we can see on the ramus and body we using post on review lateral oblique view for the lower border of the mandible occlusal we can notice for the palatal cyst if you want to see the entire mandible and the maxilla we can take more normally we will take for the opg for the mandible maxillary and we are using the what is view and other radiographs we are using is scan mri color doppler and cell so the commonly what we need to do two types now in our and next oral in our iop occlusal view thoroughly normally we are using lateral oblique view post andro what is view opg then ct mri color doppler and cellular other methods is aspiration fine needle aspiration technique biopsy is actually the removal of tissue from the being intrusive for the diagnostic examination is commonly used the value of this is proper and correct diagnosis will get and determine the degree of malignancy and determine the prognosis that's why we are using biopsy aspiration biopsy is a measure uh, most valuable for the cyst and the flatulent type of lesions it's a simple and cause of minimal inconvenience of the patient and also aspiration can be submitted for the microscopic examination chemical analysis or microbiologic examination uh, the result will be uh, sometimes negative because sometimes uh, solid mass or uh, let me consist sometimes uh, if you aspire we will get the air that is due to the uh, uh, needle is pinned to the mucous sinus most of traumatic bones pass is normally uh, seen on the axis and the infected and the epidermis white fluid with the fall order that is keratosis so normally we are using for the aspiration is white bore needle normally 5 to 10 cc string we are using so the color of fluid we can aspirate the clear pale uh, yellow color so color for contain with the cholesterol crystals that is dendritic or parenteral cyst if it's a creamy white uh, viscous suspension of keratin that is okc fresh blood you can see on the aspiration that is uh, vascular lesion or anuses and bone cyst Uh, if a bright red color that is a v mal transmission if you get a sticky clear viscous fluid like a saliva that is mucosy or granular so if you get on the aspiration uh, you say air that is maxillary sinus or more common if it's a pus that is abscess or infected cyst a reddish white fluid with the no for order that is keratosis 
pale yellow color straw colored fluid with a crossroad and that is the uh, tendencies. Blood, fresh blood we get that is vascular cyst, creamy white viscous transformation that is OKC, bright red that is AB man formation. So this is uh, and the again the tendency is what will get the aspiration clear pale chocolate fluid with the process protein is excess 4 gram per 100 ml characteristic is a dirty cream white viscous suspension that is parakinase epithelium uh, protein less than 5 gram per 100 ml parakinase is clear pale yellow chocolate fluid varying amount of cholesterol crystal that is 5 to 11 gram per and mucosa or this is a muscus or might be saliva like that clear fluid these are the commonly seen arterial or uh, malformation that is a bright red and uh, normal seen other things are like a dermoid cyst or uh, like that so you must be about this how will you get when you get aspect what's the aspiration content will get it everything you must study so next is the principles for the man why mainly we are treating the seeds first is to increase the increase in the size likely to bone intersection Involvement of the adjacent teeth leading to looseness or displacement or resorption, infection, weakening of the mandible with the possibility of pathological fracture will be there. Then enriching the vital other structures and malignant transformation. These are the main things we are treating uh, for a cyst. So we want to ma manage for eliminate all the cystic lesions in cystic lining. So physical management. There are two types: masculinization and enucleation. Masculinization do into decompression followed by the enucleation masculinization with the nasal endoscopy. Enucleation by two times, primary closure and the open packing. <coughs> masturbation on the decompression by PASH1 and PASH2. PASH2 means masturbation followed by the enucleation, that's called Walton's procedure. And masturbation by opening into the nose or antrum. Enucleation by three times, enucleation and packing, enucleation and uh, primary closure. And enucleation and primary process with the reconstruction and bone graft. So, what do you mean by masculization? Masculization is nothing but decompression and the harsh operation, all referred to creating a surgical window in the wall of the cyst. We are getting the contents of the cyst and uh, maintaining the continuity between the cyst and the oral cavity, maxillary sinus and the nasal cavity. So the only portion of the cyst is, that is removed in a piece, removed to produce the window, and remain the cystic lining is left. So what's the mechanism mainly? doing in masturbation is release of the intracystic fluid and intracystic pressure. The function stress will be allowed to stimulate new bone formation beneath the cyst membrane. Mainly the graduation and rotation of the cyst cavity and exotization of the cystic lining. So at the end of the cyst procedure the cystic cavity is completely replaced with the bone and uh, lining will diminish until it disappears. So, how will you 
do the mass production in the first uh, we'll put the insertions maybe on the maxilla then uh, the wall is open up then we will remove uh, the flap with the scissors also so that we want to create a window and we will remove the cystic conducts so we want to reduce the cystic pressure and the cystic conduct so main advantage uh, for the Masterplacation is a simple procedure where the vital structures allows eruption of the teeth, prevents oral fistula, prevents pathological fracture, reduce operating time, and reduce blood loss. The disadvantage is prolonged healing time, periodic irrigation of the cavity, prolonged follow-ups, re regular adjustment of the plug, periodic changes of the pack. Second surgery might be needed, risk of new cystic formation. So the indication commonly used for the masterpiece is indicated for below 20 years of age. And dentist uh, to allow the tooth to erupt. Large cyst and going to soft tissue or to maxillary sinus or to the nose. And inoculation causes weakening of the mandible. So we will go for masterization. But the contraindication for this masturbation is pressure cyst and cyst with a tumor potential as like OKC or keratocyst. After when you remove the cystic content, everything the normally we are using the pack. The pack normally is white head varnish. So the main composition for white head varnish is benzoin, adafone, storax, balsam of toru, and ether. These are the composition for white head varnish. This pack will uh, place in a ribbon go soaked with the white head hand wash and place inside the soaker and a plug that will kept outside. Uh, the oral cavity so we can easily remove the pack will remove always uh, after two weeks so we can achieve the normal healthy bone next one is enucleation enucleation is the process by which the total removal of cystic lesion without rupture of lining if it's possible so the it should be performed with a care and attempt to remove the cystic in one piece without fragmentation which will reduce the n chance of recurrence by increasing the diagonal of total removal so the indication mainly used for the inoculation is it's accessible cyst small to moderate size type of cyst small cyst cyst which do not enter the vital structures and also does not involve to the soft tissue so the contraindication for the inoculation is large cyst surgical access would be weakened the jaw that a fracture might be occur then this is in a young person involving erupting tooth or that is not possible when endangering the vital of the tooth near the cyst and uh, cyst is friable thin membrane like a keratocyst and also in eruption cyst these are the main things we are noticed for inauguration main in so main principle to allow the cystic cavity recovered with the mucopericial flap and the space filled with the blood coat which eventually organized to form the normal tissue. So in this enucleation of case, we must for a normal small cyst and there will be no any other vital surgeon like a nearoxin. It's not there now, so we can go for enucleation. 
so the main objective for this procedure is inoculation through the socket also we can do inoculation with the primary closure or space obliteration and primary closure so how we perform the cyst is under ga or la if the flap uh, we are uh, assessing they how uh, what type of flap we need open up the mucoperiosteal flap gain access to the cystic lining by a bone removal and enlarge the bone opening and evacuate the cyst collapse uh, evacuating cyst without rupturing the cystic lining and complete cure attached with the bone cure and also uh, countersack there will be any uh, stick lining remains will be there in the socket these are the common and uh, normally in some cases we are using uh, pack that is normally we used with the uh, normal irrigation so the main advantage is primary closure of the wound healing is rapid post operative care is reduced throughout examination of entire cystic lining can be done disadvantage pulpal necrosis damage to the adjacent vital structures more chances of jaw fractures in infection the anaerobic teeth that is along with the so these are the main things we are doing in the inoculation process you can see in the inoculation case <coughs> it's seen between the canine region it's a large size around 3 to 4 cm in size in this we can notice there is no any other vital structures near to this so we will inoculate the complete cyst without rupturing and for the bone formation we can use the pack normally sometimes we are using white varnish pack or we can use for the aerofoam pack so the bone healing will fast Uh, main consideration is in the orifice main is the teeth risk of fracture means the chance of pathological fracture will be more and also inferior alveolar nerve damage so up to in front of like anterior towards the anterior teeth like uh, the canine to anterior there is no any other vital structures but behind the premolar like uh, so the secondary mola first mola like that no there will be many so there will be chance of uh, nerve damage that will leads to neuropraxia so we will give more consideration for the nerve and reduce the risk of fracture going for a tender cyst how will you treat? The disease that originates due to the separation of the follicle from the around the crown of an unerupted tooth is the most common lithium on the impacted tooth. It is age around 10 to 30 years, male prediction asymptomatic, and pain it becomes infected, and also that can lead to a bony expansion. So the treatment choice for the dendrosis normally we are going is inoculation of the cyst complete cyst removal from that area. Otherwise, there will be leads to bony distension and also leads to pathological fracture. We can see in this uh, radiograph there will be bony expansion and the Linear set, you can see thin plates, so there will be chances of pathological fracture. So 
that is why in this case sometimes we go for uh, mass utilization but mass utilization is not the correct procedure but we want to preserve the vital structures so uh, maximize we go for inoculation and we'll uh, sometimes we want to need to reconstruct the ramus of mandible this is odontic keratosis it is arise from the sulcus of the lamina cystic expansion no cause for the rest of osmotic pressure concern by benign cystic neoplasm it's seen in a 10 to 40 years of age seen on the mainly on the angle to ramus of the mandible it is asymptomatic and become painful intermedullary expansion will be there the recurrence is from In the odontogenic keratosis tumor, no, normally we can use inoculation or peripheral osteotomy, chemical cauterization, mass replacement, and end block resection. It's a small cyst, then we go for uh, inoculation. It's a large cyst, we go for mass replacement, then only we can go for inoculation because we want to reduce the cystic pressure. So, we want to remove all the cystic connects and we want to close the cyst. Then only we can close. So my it will take for a long duration around one month, continuously with the irrigate with the pitadin and saline, and also we can use with the adopt pack or white and varnish. Some cases uh, there will be end block recession because we want to cut that end area because the lower border also in touch so we want we can never save the particular segment so we want to end block recession also we want to. you can see in this diagram there is a last cyst uh, there will be chance of the pathological fracture will be there so in this case we go for a end block recession of the mandible Small cyst, we have nothing problem. We go for an inoculation of the cyst. So, most of the time, if you go for a uh, OKC, like that, no, we go for the x rays, like a three dimensional CT, error because then only we know about the bony expansion. Then only we can, for the treatment, we can decide. If, uh, Next for the periapical cyst, it is inflammatory origin, asymptomatic large cyst, uh, large lesions, and become more painful, but is bone expansion. The recurrent chance is very rare. Normally, if uh, endontically treated tooth, you know, you can see the periapical cyst. In this, we go nothing for, we go for the inoculation of the cyst. Radical cyst is also the same. Uh, we go for the inoculation of the cyst. Next one is the mucosal and ranula. Mucosal is nothing but inside there will be mucus secretion. So we go for the uh, inoculation of the mucosal. Ranula is seen on the floor of the mouth. It is uh, seen as like a bluish this thing. So in this case also we go for the inoculation of the cyst. So uh, some cases we can to preserve the vital section because we always do careful dissection. Then only we can preserve the vital section. Otherwise, will damage to the vital. Uh, organs like nerves, blood vessels will be there on the floor of mouth. This topic already we discussed about the management of cyst. It is we are concentrating regarding about the surgical manual like uh, mass utilization and inoculation. Mass utilization divided into pass one, pass two. Inoculation, inoculation with the banking like that. What are we doing? The white and varnish, and how will you treat with the dentist or endocasing and other small type of 